If you're considering moving to the Reno, Nevada area, you probably want to consider the cost of living. Hey everyone, this is David Tully, and in this video, we're gonna be going over the cost of living in Reno, Nevada. If you're considering moving to the area, we're gonna be going over home prices, rent prices, we're gonna break down the utility costs, and we're gonna show you what the gas prices are to give you a better understanding of the costs associated with living in Reno, Nevada. And if you enjoy this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, just leave them down in the comments below. And if you're thinking about moving or relocating to the Reno, Nevada area, and you need some help buying a home, Home, just reach out. So the first thing we're going to talk about are home prices. And unfortunately, home prices in Reno, Nevada are not that cheap. The median home value currently in the Reno Sparks area is about $550 to $560,000, which is not cheap and it is not very affordable. It's very unfortunate. To compare it to the rest of the U.S., the median home value across the U.S. is about $416,000. So we are over 30% higher than the median home value in the U.S., which is not great. But to put into perspective, we are significantly cheaper than a lot of surrounding cities where a lot of people move from, like San Jose, San Francisco, LA, and even San Diego, which are significantly more expensive than the Reno area. Reno is going to be a little bit more expensive than Sparks. If you're looking for slightly better value, Sparks might be a good option. We currently have some brand new townhouses going in the Cold Springs area, just under $400,000, which is a good price point to get in as a first time home buyer. And if you're looking to be in the South Reno or Damani Ranch area. De Loretto is currently building duet homes, which are kind of similar to a townhouse. They are two bedrooms and they're about 1,200 square feet, which is a really good option if you're trying to get into your first home. And if you're looking for a single family home, your Horton is currently offering some really great two-story homes and townhouses in the Spanish Springs or Sparks area under $500,000. And if you're looking for even better value in the Reno area, probably going to want to check out the North Valleys, such as Stead, Lemon Valley, or even Cold Springs. But if those home prices are still a little too expensive for you, you can check on some of the outskirts cities such as Fernley or Fallon. Next up is rental prices. And unfortunately for renters, the Reno Sparks rental market is very, very strong. If you're looking for a typical single family home, you can expect to spend anywhere from about $1,900 all the way up to $2,500 on average if you're looking for a property in Reno or Sparks. If you're looking for a single one bedroom apartment, you can expect to spend anywhere from 11 to 1300 and if you want to spend a little bit more in the 1400 all the way up to 2000 range for a one bedroom apartment there are a ton of apartments popping up left and right in the reno sparks area and it's really just going to depend on the area you want to be in and the kind of luxury or amenities that the property has has. Another really great way to save a ton of money on rent is get a four to five bedroom single family home and find some roommates or friends and split that four or five ways. This is a way you can save significantly on rental prices. Next up are taxes and this is one of the biggest benefits to living in the Reno, Nevada area. If you're moving from a state like Hawaii or California where you have higher state income taxes, this is a huge benefit for the Reno area because there are no state income taxes. So if you're moving to the area and you have the same salary or a very comparable salary, this could be a huge benefit to you. You might also be wondering about property taxes. If you're buying a brand new home in the area. You're looking at about 1 to 1.1% of the purchase price for property taxes. One of the other great benefits of living in the Reno area is that if it's your primary residence, you can qualify as a primary residence and you will have a primary residence cap of 3% per year on your property taxes. And if you're buying an older or a resale home, your property taxes are typically going to be significantly less. Next up are daycare costs. And while I currently don't have any kids of my own, fortunately I will be having my first son next month and we're super excited. But with that comes more expenses and of course daycare costs and something I have to think about, which can be a significant monthly expense. And I definitely understand now why either parents might want to stay home to take care of their kids because with some of these expenses, you might be working just to pay for daycare, which doesn't really make sense. In the Reno area, I talked to some friends of my own and did some research and I found out that the average monthly expense is about $900 to $1,400 a month. I also did a little more research and you can find some cheaper options in the $600 to 
$700 range, which can be way more affordable, but you're gonna have to do some research on your own and see what daycare is the best fit for you, your family, and your kids. Next up are utility costs. And overall, I would say the utility costs in Reno, Nevada are not that bad. But I would like to tell you that NV Energy has increased our electricity two or three times in the last year, up to about 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And to put that into perspective, many parts of California are being charged at 31 cents and higher than where I'm from in Hawaii, it's more than 40 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a significant difference. And also to give you an idea on what my monthly bills are, I typically spend about $150, $200 a month on power and gas in the fall and winter months. And in the summer months, I spend anywhere from 210 up to 275 a month, but I also have a Tesla or an electric vehicle. So my power bill is higher than most other people. My home is also a 2100 square foot two story home that is only four years old. So it's very energy efficient and has good insulation. If you're wondering about my water bill, it is fairly cheap as well. In the fall and winter months, where I don't use as much water, my bill is typically in the 30 to $35 range. And once I turn my sprinklers back on in the spring, summer, and the earlier parts of fall, my water bill is anywhere from about $65 to $75. And I run my water in the back and the front where I have a little bit of grass in the front and back, trees and bushes. And I run that about three days a week, twice a day. So overall, I would say the utilities in Reno, Nevada for power, gas, and water are not that bad. One of the best parts about Reno is that the entertainment costs of going out and getting a drink or going out for a nice meal is significantly less than places like Las Vegas. In Reno, you can typically go out, depending on how fancy you wanna get, you can spend anywhere from about 15 to $25 for an entree, and anywhere from six to $12 for a beer or a cocktail, which is significantly less than Las Vegas. I would say for two people going out, getting a couple drinks and some entrees, you can easily spend anywhere from 80 to $100, which like I said, is significantly less than places like San Francisco or even Vegas, which is really, really nice. Also, if you're looking for some typical entertainment options like comedians, singers, going to those events at GSR or some of the other areas like El Dorado, also gonna be significantly cheaper than some of the casinos in Vegas. You're probably wondering what grocery costs are like in the Reno area, and that's a great question. The grocery index is at 100 for the national average, and Reno is at 102.3. So Reno is only 2.3% higher than the national average, which is not that bad. I'm originally from Hawaii, where grocery costs are significantly more expensive. So Reno is not that bad compared to places like Hawaii, or like I said, even the national average. You wanna save a ton of money on groceries, I highly recommend going to places like Sam's Club, Costco, Winco, or even Grocery Outlet. Those are really great spots, and typically where my wife and I go, to get our groceries. Last but not least are gas prices. You're probably wondering what gas prices are like in Reno, and they are currently about 420 to 440 for regular gas, and about 470 to 490 for premium gas. And you're probably wondering what it's like to compare it to to the national average, and the national average for regular gas at the moment is about $3.82, and the national average for premium gas is currently at about $4.56, so it's not that much more expensive than the national average. Average. But if you're driving through Carson City and you're not going out of your way, I highly recommend filling up in Carson City because it's typically 30 to 40 cents per gallon cheaper for regular and premium, which is a huge benefit, like I said, if you're driving through the area. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the cost of living in Reno, Nevada. If you have any other questions about costs associated with living in the Reno area, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're thinking about moving, or relocating to the Reno, Nevada area, and you need some help buying a home, just reach out. I'd be happy to help. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.